Hello and welcome to Mastermind Group 11. Our mission is to build million dollar businesses so that we can have financial freedom, time for our families and make an impact in our communities. Let's kick it off with big wins and short intro. Florent, lead the way, please. Hey, good morning, guys. Florian Nutation, Modern Finishes, Painting and Decorative Art, Living Naples, Florida, Bonita Springs, which is Southwest Florida, East West Coast. Since it's been two weeks, I have a lot of like big wins. Still, we talk about like last week. Uh, we've been talking every week, but we complete on Saturday like $23,000. An exterior have a cabinet job for $5,400. Another project was a garage floor with finished for $2,800. Still working on some project which we started in February and being in February, which still is like 90% done. Just waiting for the people to install the carpenter so we can go and put the last, what they call the clear coat. And that cabinet job, which is the cool thing, is about I got a video testimonial, which is looking so bad. It's been like two or three months, haven't gotten a testimonial. So also, I start a new guy. He's a helper. He just came from Mexico. He looks very, very nice guy. He never stops. He's just running on the job site like crazy. Those are my big wins. It's a lot, actually, but... For two weeks is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear that. Thank you, Florin. That's really good. Daryl? Yeah. Yeah, I am from Oklahoma, northern Oklahoma, small town. We have about 45,000 people in my entire county. Last year, year before last, I had five employees, lost every single one of them. Was not able to go to PCA last year like I really wanted to. But now I have four full-time employees. Most of well, all of them are less than two years in our business. Three of those are less than six months in our business. And so one of my big wins is this week, I am off the entire week and I'm in Orlando at PCA. So I didn't get to go last year. I am going this year. So that's pretty cool. So that's my big wins. And he still made it to Mastermind. Yes. I'm in a hotel room. I don't have a normal background, but hey. Yeah, that's why I'm wondering where is he that? I mean, <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, that's awesome, Daryl. Florin, you'll appreciate okay. this. Daryl sent me a picture yesterday. There was some water in the background. He's in Florida. He says, is there an alligator? I says, is there water? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. five, five minutes later, I saw a sign that said, beware of alligators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not, it's not going to come yeah. to you, so no worries. Yeah, no worries. As long as nobody's been feeding them, you're fine. But if yeah. some snowbirds or whoever have been feeding them, you're not fine. So yeah. you know, just, Or you can eat them, way. right? You go to a restaurant and eat them. Yeah, and get you a, a gator head souvenir to bring home and put on the bookshelf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Daryl. And uh, again, glad you made it. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Chris Petkall with the Proud Paintbrush in uh, Houston, Texas. My big wins are my losses this these last two weeks. We uh, we did record breaking sales in January, highest month we've ever had, and it was in January, which is great. But because of that, we've found a lot of holes in the boats, lots of leaks and place areas for improvement. But so we've lost a lot of battles this month, but we're winning the war and we're putting in a lot of. Lots of, how do you say, we're learning a lot of lessons. Yes. Growing pains, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Growing pains. Growing pains. Once you take care of one constraint, like maybe not as much business and the business flows in, it's got it coming down a conveyor belt. It reveals the next critical constraint. And sometimes it's more than one. And so you're finding them now, and so now it's whack-a-mole sometimes. <laughs> take care of them all so we can keep it going and growing. That's a crappy game. I don't like playing that game, but yeah. I'm playing it right now. Yeah. But hey, that's what but takes you have you a to goal. the next level, right? Yeah. If we whack yeah. them in time, then we get to go yeah. to the next level. But guess yeah. what's at the next level? Another oh, round yeah. of whack them all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> next critical constraint. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Chris. Juan. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Juan with JG Painting out of Milton, Massachusetts. And my big win for this is that I started cutting back my time on the field which it feels really good. So I only join the field in the morning with my guys, getting everything set up, and then sometimes meeting with the uh, clients in the afternoon, and I'm building systems, which I like. Yes, yes, yes. That is a win. That is awesome. Very good. Thank you, Juan. So glad to hear that. All right, Isaac. Good morning. Isaac Mama here with White Oak Painting in Southeast Iowa. And my big win for this week is that 
we started the biggest job that I've ever done, a $65,000 interior, Ooh. and it's going really well. Wow. And our process is getting nailed in. And so much so that for the last two rotary meetings I've been able to attend, which I've been out of circuit since bringing guys on to try and get them up to speed. And it's going really well. Team culture has been fantastic. And yeah, I'm just in a much better place than I was three or four weeks ago. And life's good. good. Sure. You guys. It's good. Fantastic. Thank you, Isaac. We appreciate you too. Let's keep it in Iowa. Hey, Seuss. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jesus Garcia with Garcia Painting down here in Iowa City, Iowa. And my big wins is staying top of mind. I called a customer and it landed another job this week. So that's good. Yes, yes sir. Awesome. Nice. He's being humble. He's landed a ton since being staying top. Do two things during staying top of mind. We were down to a real slim schedule there and uh, staying top of mind and going door to door. Start filling it right up. So just as wanted to share that as uh, encouragement to you guys and also a testimony to his, his hard work getting after it, just following the system. So way to go, Jesus. Well, thank you, Steve. Mm-hmm. Bryce, good morning. Big wins and short intro, please. Good morning. My name is Bryce. I'm with Southeast Painting. We're out of Atlanta, Georgia. My big wins are we landed a couple big jobs back to back. We've got one right now that's about 12 and a half grand that we're in the middle of. And then we have another one that's about $13,000. We have a church. It's my first church exterior that we're going to be doing. And we'll be doing that uh, next week. That's about another 13. So super happy about that. Sir, Very fantastic. Nice. Glad to hear that, Bryce. Thank you for sharing. All right. Let's go up to Canada. Craig. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Craig Armstrong from Toronto, Canada, and I've been in business for a number of years now. And my big win is I have a send out cards dropping within the next day or so for, for leak day. So mm-hmm. I have a card with a frog on it. There uh, you go. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it should be fun. Should, should do a good job of keeping me top of mind along with email and Facebook and all that other type stuff. There you go. Fun fact. I was looking through some memories, Craig, and I saw pictures of us in Michigan back in 2015. Yeah. I believe oh. it was Lansing. Remember that? Yeah. Yep. Craig was at the second ever workshop that I ever gave back when I was traveling, before I retired from traveling and giving workshops. Craig and uh, many others were there, so that was cool. And mm-hmm. you brought me a coffee, coffee. a pound of coffee, and never forget that. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the caffeinated painter blend. I had a friend that roasted up some, some coffee for me and put my face on it, and we called it the caffeinated painter blend. That's so pretty awesome. cool. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Sonia. Okay, so I have been using the referral I I get a really good referral from one of the networks that I was wondering is there anything ever going to happen with this group and because it felt like I was getting really distracted with it and no it was a really nice cabinet referral and then she just asked me the her referral asked me hey can you give me a do you have cards with you and so I I got them. She just grabbed them all. She's I have so and so. We got to talk to someone. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so then she, the re- person that referred me, says, "Girl, she was so impressed with you. You need to be, you know, excited about that." And she just can't. She couldn't stop talking about it. I go, "Thank you. I really needed that boost. I really did." So that was a wonderful. I'm working. So that's what I'm working towards now. <laughs> yeah, Sonia's got cards for days. Yeah, that's awesome, Sonia. Great networking. Okay, let's see here. And Rich, welcome back. Big win, short intro, please. Oh, big win. So uh, lots of things going on. I was scary slow from December, this old time of the year. Um, but picked up, I made a bunch of phone calls, went through small clients, top of mind stuff. And, and then things have picked up drastically. And we're quite busy. Mm. So I also sold some property last week. And I'm putting up a new building. So we're going to do a little workshop and storage area and whatnot. But that was huge, a huge, Mm -hmm. it's a huge thing for me. That was one of the goal things that I wrote down in my notebook every night was the, was to do something with my old barn. Well, it's finally in the, it's finally in the works. So it's been a while. So I'm happy about that. Awesome. Okay. Fantastic. And way to go writing that, writing your goals down. It's awesome. Writing some goals down. Mm -hmm. It it works. Powerful. Indeed. Yes, sir. Awesome. And again, it's good to see you. Thank you. Nice All to right, see you. Appreciate that. 
All right. What is the one thing that we could brainstorm such that would make everything else easier and or unnecessary? Chris. My question, I know you can't give me legal advice. My question is about contracts and just what in particular, at least you need to make sure you have covered, don't have covered. I've really, what I do is wait till uh, something goes wrong. And then, all right, now that goes in the contract. I've had to put stuff like, if you don't like the color, we can change the color for you at an additional charge that's not included. Yeah, just in general, is there maybe a philosophy or a way to think about this or what? Oh, I'm glad you asked those <laughs> questions. Yes. Before I answer that, though, where did these customers come from? What was the source? Do you recall of some of these specifics, specific customers? Um, one like was... One was through Google, next door. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of ones in particular where I've had problems. One through Painter's Choice. Okay. So these were mind. cold leads from either Google, next door, or paid lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, no criticism. This is common. This is very common. So what do we do? Uh, and, and essentially, they weren't from Rotary, right? They weren't from BNI. They weren't from Chamber. They weren't from uh, repeat customers, and they weren't from referrals, which they usually aren't. So instead, what do we do? We've got to get started with, sometimes we get started with some cold leads. Now, ideally we want to go to networking so that they're warmer leads to the referrals. And usually they're also quality. The quality of the leads are, are much better than Google or paid leads. However, if we're still getting some cold leads or going after cold leads, then what we do is we just make sure that we pre-qualify really well pre-qualify really well. So it's, it comes back to the principle when somebody says, Hey, what's your guys' policy on uh, clocking out on time or using a company vehicle, or I need a policy for language, or I need a policy for a dress code. Usually that's an indicator that they're not hiring for character, right? So in the same respect, we need to make sure that we're working for care, people who have character, right? And so a lot of times, like when I offer strategy calls, and a lot of times I offer strategy calls, I don't offer them. So I offer them to one, I want to give value. And then two, it's not just to offer them some of our services, whether it's mastermind or coaching or just the cafe, but I'm interviewing them just as much as they're checking me out. And I don't invite everybody to a mastermind group. Cause if you notice, like you guys are awesome, right? Everybody in here, I don't know that one person would say I have a problem with somebody else in here. Everybody in here is just fantastic. And I'm very particular about that. Same thing with painting customers. I don't want to have to put my team in with difficult people, with unreasonable people, with C clients, right? So while I'm estimating and looking at their home, I'm also checking them out. I'm also interviewing them. Are there any red flags, right? Do I get any sense that they're not nice? And if that's the case, I'm going to find a polite way to bow out at the end for your project. And I'll follow through with the proposal and whatnot to say, unfortunately, we're not able to paint it for until, I don't know, 2035, you guys available <laughs> in 10 years or 11 years, whatever it might be. I'm exaggerating that point, but I'll find a way to refer them to somebody else. So I would say, make sure you pre-qualify really well, especially if you're using some cold leads. Double up on your networking to generate warm referrals right? And protect your culture. Then you won't need as much small print. In fact, when you've got this locked in, you don't even need a signed contract anymore. I never cared about a signed contract proposal. I wrote it up just so everything was in writing. I never asked them to sign it. Sometimes they say, you want to sign it? I'm like, nah, as long as I got their deposit, I really didn't care if they signed the contract. Yeah. Steve, yeah. I can attest to that. I'm working on two separate over $60,000 jobs right now. I haven't signed a contract on either one of them. One's a house, one's a residential. My proposals have zero, zero fine print in them. I, If I'm going to be going over colors, I'll make sure they have the color up front and they like it. I've never had an issue because we're pretty qualified in our clients. Uh, we work with almost solid A clients all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I know Bryce was talking last year. He had some issues and he put in some different things. In different geographic areas, you have a bunch more clients. I get that. But... When I pre-qualify my clients, I'm not worrying about it. I referred away one couple of weeks ago. This lady had somebody paint her brick house, did a horrible job. And I told her it would cost way more than it's worth to you to have me do it. I referred her to a, another painter in town and he got the job. She loves me. He loves me. I don't have to mess with a headache. It was really cool. 
didn't make anybody mad by saying, I don't want to do your job and didn't have to have her go and try to search for another painter. I gave her a painter right then and there. Mm -hmm. He's got the job. Is that helpful, Chris? Yeah, it's really helpful. It's uh, actually not what I was expecting, but even yeah. it answers a question I had of, to some extent, it doesn't really matter what's in the contract. You know what I it's mean? True. And I think yep. that's what you're pointing towards. So mm -hmm. it's definitely helpful. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, because if we don't hire for character and if we don't pre-qualify really well, we can't put enough policies in place to box their character in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. uh, beliefs supersede laws. Every time I learned this when I was 15, washing dishes in a, uh, in a uh, Chinese uh, restaurant. And I'll leave it at that. Beliefs supersede laws. It doesn't matter what your laws are. Their beliefs supersede them. <laughs> okay. I've never <laughs> eaten... Uh, Chinese food sense or Asian food. <laughs> okay. Uh, April loves it. She knows some of the stories, but I, I don't share them because I don't want to ruin it for everybody else who enjoys it. <laughs> hey, moving along. Moving along. Juan, you're up. Okay. So since I'm spending more time on the office building systems, so I was wondering why you guys have for, because, you know, checking on your crew anymore. So I'm, I'm being asking the clients how they, being performance so mm -hmm. do you have have any systems or how do, can i score my guys i'm sorry I mean, did you say can you school scroll a score score yeah can you score them Scorecard. yes yep okay good question so a couple of ways to go about this is one is when you call the customer don't ask them specifically about the guy's performance or how they do and it sounds like you're asking them to do your job of mon managing them instead okay ask them say hey How's your experience so far? Now it makes it focused on them and they will appreciate that. Right? And I ask my employees the same question. How's the customer's experience? Gives their mindset different too. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's really cool. I don't ask my guys how the job's going. How's the customer's experience, guys? And that changes their mindset. Everything. It's a game changer. It's 180 degrees. They stop thinking like a technician and they start thinking customer service. If you take care of their experience... And when you make mistakes, it's not that big of a deal. But if you don't focus on their feelings and their experience and you make a, and, and you just exhale the wrong way, that's a big deal. It's just, it's totally different. Now, how do you score them? What you do is at the end of the job, right? You say, Hey, Mrs. Jones, on a scale of one to 10, how is your experience with Joe and his crew? That's it. Okay. Whatever number they give you, you say, thank you. If it was a seven, you just say, thank you. What would make it an eight? Right. And then you get real feedback. Okay. Specific feedback. Specific. And that's okay. their score, seven or whatever it might have been. And that's called a net promoter. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Isaac. So practical question. Um, if I've got two guys and they both drop their kids off before school and pick them up, as far as vehicles go, if I've got a lead and a regular painter, and I want to keep it brand cohesive at the job site and not have a random vehicle there that has rust on it. Should I get a like cheaper vehicle and have painter have that vehicle? Or should I just have the lead have the vehicle? Because just practically speaking, them like carpooling isn't too practical for their situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So this is a tough one. And it's a tough situation, especially for me, because I'm real particular about branding, right? Like I make this big deal in the sales system, right? About look, you got to have everything looking sharp. And if you watch any of my mentor Todd Smith's videos, you're like, <laughs> dude, is everything being perfect as can be. And so I, I have this I bent towards perfection, but in this situation is tough. And so one question I would ask is what scales? Okay. So when you have 12 painters, can you buy 12 painters a vehicle? Right. Unlikely for uh, the economics to work out for any business. And not if we want to stack profits and we certainly want that. So unfortunately it doesn't scale. So then we just keep looking for other options. All right, here's the constraint. It's got a rust bucket. Is Can they carpool? They can't. Then what can we do? That's a tough one. Unfortunately, can they meet at the store down the road, Home Depot or something, and then ride along? How do we communicate that to them without hurting his feelings? That's a tough one too. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you've made a lot of deposits in that relationship and knowing you, pretty sure you've taken very good care of them. Uh, but that is generally going to be a tough one. Anybody have any ideas for him here? 
I actually just got a another work truck for one of my guys. I bought mm -hmm. a 2010 F-150. It looks pretty nice. And I got tired of my guy, not for him, not a personal thing, but just him having to haul all my stuff from his truck. Mm -hmm. and, and his insurance doesn't cover a hole in a trailer. So I put him in my truck and it was 11500 bucks for this F-150. I knew I had to put a couple grand into it, got that, paid cash for it. So I have... Instead of just some random truck sitting in the driveway, I have two of my watermark painting trucks and one job or one and one job, one on another. It's, but I think it's a financial thing. Can you afford it? Um, mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you can afford it and struggle, I would say no. But if you can afford it, I would definitely say do that. But keep in mind on the insurance, auto insurance is pretty expensive for business. I think, I think I'm the only painter in my area that has actual business insurance on our vehicles. And I have four trucks with business insurance. So it's by 5,500 bucks a year for my insurance right now. Mm -hmm. So I keep all that in mind. It's worth it for me. Awesome. Yep. And it's something else. Thank you, Daryl, to consider is, do you see this uh, painter uh, becoming a lead? Oh. So then, okay, then it might, yeah. it might be worth going investing in them. You just want to look down the road, right? The long game, look in the future, like what scales, what works here. Totally. And if he's going to, yeah, if he's going to be a lead, then it makes sense to go ahead and you know look into investing. And, and to Daryl's point, if if it fits the budget without keeping you up at night, because we need sleep too, right? Yeah. We need truck sleep. Sometimes that's which one. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Good deal. Okay. Awesome. Right Thank on. you. You're welcome. Hey, Seuss. Hey, Steve. Yes. So I have a question here. It's a related to my lead. Mm -hmm. So he's been telling me lately that he's been feeling like he's had to push the way towards the, the last few projects. So I was wondering here if it's if this is something I should be thinking about, like giving my lead authority to give verbal warnings or rent warnings if he feels he has to, or is this something I have to step into even now if I'm not in the field as much? Yeah, great well, question. Mm -hmm. So your lead wants to know, or your question is, should you uh, delegate authority to your lead? To be able to follow the progressive disciplinary procedure, right? Verbal warning, written warning, days off, removed. And the yeah. answer is absolutely, right? So even in the Bible, Moses was leading the Israelites and all these craziness and chaos going on. And they're like, no, left. Could you imagine hurting all these people? Go around here and settle in all these disputes. And then his his father-in-law came to him and said, listen, it's not possible for you to like judge between all these people and, and solve all of their differences. You need to assign some elders, some other people to help you to solve some of their issues. And so you, did, you delegate authority. So yes, absolutely. Delegate authority to your leads and coach them up and train them on how to do this but give them authority to give verbal warnings, written warnings, and even time off. Now you might, if there's a fourth one in a year where they might be let go, you may retain, you'd probably retain that decision, but absolutely give them authority for a verbal warning and a written warning. And the good news is you almost never have to go past a written warning. Whenever you give a written warning to somebody, they do an about face, right? Like, Whoa, I didn't realize it was that serious. Oh, yeah. But yes, delegate leadership to your leaders. Okay. Sounds read good. read yeah. the five levels of leadership with him. That's a great book. I will. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do that with one of my guys. Sounds yeah. good. Right on. Great. Thank you. Florin. On the past, you guys have been talking about how to advertise yourself in the community, uh, what you call uh, door advertising. So I want something feedback about it because it's like, it's been like, I never tried that. I'm a shy guy. So what is the first step? Of course, I have to print. All, what you call uh, uh, all those hangers but mm -hmm. if you guys can share a story about that i appreciate it so yes. i can see where can i start and how it is and how it can be done i'm so glad you asked this because i would like to save you from hours of heartaches and mistakes and the hard way and because i've made so many mistakes trying to figure this out when i came to florida i had to start over first there's the hurricane right so we had all this hurricane work i was like yeah but then everybody else came down and helped out and it was done in six months and Punta Gorda was a brand new city again. I was like, oh, <laughs> that wasn't in my business plan. I saw painting for days, but it was only six months. So I had to go door to door. And so some things that I would and would not recommend is one is naturally, I'm a shy guy too. Naturally, I'm a full-blown introvert. I know sometimes it doesn't appear so, uh, especially when I have all this energy, but I drink extrovert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> liquid extrovert fuel that is before i go out i did i would have a double espresso before i went out Ooh. true story 
Yeah, and I'd bring some iced tea with me. And Florent, you know the heat in Florida. Sometimes this was July and August afternoons, but I had two little kids at home who were going, feed me. <laughs> so I didn't have an option, right? So what worked? Here's what worked is don't leave door hangers. Don't leave door hangers. That's a waste of your time walking around or even your team's time walking around. Instead, knock on doors and do what I call courtesy canvassing. Courtesy canvassing. Um, especially if it's directly close to a house that you are painting or have painted. And you just say, you know, you should say, hi, I'm Steve with uh, Brennan Painting. I just want to let you know we're doing some uh, work down the road. And if some tape or plastic blows down into your yard, I would like you to call me, please, so that we can come and pick it up right away. And then leave them your card. Right. Courtesy canvassing. So that's the first thing you want to do. The best opportunity, because that's a warm invite. It doesn't seem like you're uh, spamming them, right? Like you're soliciting them. You are offering service first and value first. Now, if you're going into neighborhoods that you haven't painted yet, okay, then we can't really offer that because it's not true. So we can't do it. But what we can do is, yeah, knock on doors, introduce yourself, let them know that you're in the neighborhood providing free estimates. Can I give you one now, please? Smiley face bobblehead. It's yep, hard to always. say no to a smiley face bobblehead. Okay. And it's free. So you're just offering on free estimates. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And get used to some no's. It's okay. No, get off my lawn. No. And just know that's coming. But it, again, this part here is a numbers game. And count your steps. Have fun with it. So I'd count my steps. And I was listening to Zig Ziglar the whole way. So I had him like in my corner just cheering me on from door to door. And so in the heat, I would walk for hours. And Zig's just talking to me from door to door. A little bit of coffee. A little more iced tea. And... <laughs> Lining them up, one after another. Even the HOAs who said you couldn't solicit it. <laughs> Kids got to eat. I didn't care. Okay, Bryce, you're up. Right now, we're in the middle of these two large projects. We've got a lot of work going on. It's trying to make all the deadlines and meet all the deadlines. We've got some exciting stuff going on in logistics and things like that. It's just been... we've. It's been odd. I've had one guy who just had a baby last week. Then I have another guy whose wife got diagnosed with breast cancer last week. So it's going to be a difficult season with these two guys. And I want to hire, but I'm not quite there yet because I need to finish up some projects and getting our second work vehicle up and running. And so I don't have a whole lot to unpack right now. But mm. it's just trying to keep the keep the momentum going and keep progress on job sites. Right now, mm. we're really production heavy. Yeah. I'm sure glad you made it. And I understand that sometimes it's, I know it needs to be done. And we're doing it. But we show up here for encouragement and inspiration. And we appreciate mm. your contribution, too, and still your commitment to make it here for your mastermind. Yeah. Yeah. Way to be, Bryce. Awesome. Be. Thank you. Sonia, you're up. Mine is more the confidence um, thing going on with the sell still and the estimate. For example, things that I come across, I'm like, how do I answer that? And um, sometimes I get a little stumped and, mm -hmm. but they don't seem to care. They do. I had this one incident when you, something you pointed on, cause this is what, what it was, is that the client that I, or the potential that I have asked me about insurance. And I was like, yes, I do have my certificate of insurance. And then how much, cause I contract out, I don't have employees. And so he asked me about workman's comp. And so when it comes to insurance, I'm like, oh, and, and I can learn it. It's, that's such a boring topic for me. I'm like, oh gosh, I hate it. <laughs> this is somebody walk me through like I'm a mm -hmm. seven-year-old and explain it to me, just give me examples or whatever. So I did, I reached out to somebody and asked them about that. And that pretty much clarified it. So it was just me. Now I know that when I go on the, when they ask me something like that, I'm going to ask them, are you looking for what? What, it's the verbiage or it's the, like, what is, they didn't understand like what workman's comp is and what the COI covers. And so I was able to, I had the, my insurance agent explain to me, can you talk to me so I can talk to them and then ask them, is it workman's comp you're looking for? Or you're looking for what my insurance covers or if it covers it. And so that was mm -hmm. what it was. We got it clarified. So that was good, but it's just in general. So yeah. Okay. Let me simplify this for you, please. Mm -hmm. There are two that you need, liability okay. insurance. Okay. This protects their stuff. Their you stuff. drop paint on their couch, their rug, you smack their uh, Mercedes with a ladder. The liability insurance covers 
their stuff. It covers your butt because it pays for their stuff if you scratch it. One example is we were etching a garage floor and uh, this crew was brand new at it and they were asset etching it and they had just laid a um, paver driveway in and they rinsed uh, the paver driveway first, etched the floor. It, it, um, it all ran down the paver driveway, which they expected, but they didn't rinse it enough and it it stripped all the color off the pavers and uh, we got, I got to buy them a new paver driveway. Thankfully, I had liability insurance. My insurance company paid for it. Thanks to liability insurance. So that's what that's for. Work comp, okay, is to protect the painters when they're injured. It happens. We get injured. I got injured. Remember, I busted my knee on that bank roof. And that's when I just said, oh, my goodness, I've got to figure out this uh, business end of this thing because I can't paint forever. It also protects your tail or them, right, so that the, your, the painters can't go back and sue the customer, right, when they hurt themselves on their home, if they fall off the roof, if they fall off a ladder, the work comp protects everybody. So I would, it's simple, it's liability insurance to cover their stuff, work comp in the event they get hurt, which also protects their stuff, right? Now, it, it would help just to put a couple little line items in there. It's like we carry a million or $2 million liability insurance and our painters, we have workman's compensation insurance to cover our painters. Now, using subs, this is really important. Please write this down. You want to confirm that they each have an active workman's comp policy. You want to make sure that your name is on their policy because here's what happens. Here's what happens. Excuse me. In the event, because they can show you a cert and stop paying, but you've got a cert and you think they're covered. But if you request to be on their policy, be named on their pi be named on the policy, uh, they their insurance yep. company will notify you the minute they don't have coverage. So it was for certificate holder, exactly. Yes, certificate right. holder. Thank you, Florence. Yep. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, not named on their policy. Thank you. Certificate holder. Yes. Okay, because mm -hmm. okay, that's that was one of the things that we were going back and forth, and I was that in Texas, we're the wild west. So you don't really it's not required. Mm -hmm. However, that was the first time I ever was asked that. Do your yeah. workers have workman's comp? Mm -hmm. And so, no. And I've asked everybody that, who have COI, I would, they're like, no, we don't have workman's comp. So I called my agent and it's not that expensive for them to do their own. So she says, you have to, they have to get their own. Mm -hmm. So you're not paying for them, but they pay their own. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So I didn't know whether to pass this guy on. And I was transparent and said, I do not have it. And mm -hmm. I just have the, my COI, he has his COI and that, I can present that to you. And he was okay with that. I was like, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's so not, I think too yeah. with the yeah, it's not common. I think too with the influx of California and some other states coming into Florida, or excuse me, into Texas, that you're going to probably hear more of this because that's not common. It's, in fact, I thought Florida was a wild west, but no, you have to have work comp in Florida, and liability. So I guess you are the last wild west Texas there. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only that, but just don't forget uh, because you're gonna carry your work comp and once a year go for out. And when you go for audit, they're going to ask you for certificate holder for all the subs. So just keep that in your mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then right? they have to have each one has to have, say it's a sub company, or the, mm -hmm. they have to have everyone under them as well, right? It's not just that one person or anyways, I guess I could ask my... Yeah, anyway. the company needs the policy. It's up to them to make sure each of their employees are covered. If the company has it, then I'm... You know. Yeah, and, 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 and clarify with your work comp company too. Okay. Just so you're covered. Uh, there was one last thing I was going to say, and I just forgot it. But yeah, sorry, I lost it. If it comes back, I'll, I'll message you later. Another idea for you. Okay. So that, uh, that's why you ask a certificate holder, not just for insurance, the other insurance, but for work comp too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Both of them, no matter what. So you'll cover 100%. Oh, here Next it is. Week. It oh. just came back. <laughs> Be prepared for work comp audits. It's not like an IRS audit. It's not a bad thing. It's just something they do every year to make sure that mm -hmm. you're paying what you're supposed to be paying. Yep. So they're going to look at your payroll easy. or how much. Yeah, it's easy. They're going to look at how much you paid and just make sure that what you're paying is in alignment with the payroll. Or payroll. payroll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That one come through on a group chat. Okay. Work comp. Okay. Got it. That just, that does clarify. That was like, cause I, I was like, man, I just, I give up. I don't want to do any of this anymore. <laughs> you know, I get, yeah, yeah. I like, no, no, you're okay. It's the next constraint. That means you made it to this level, right? <laughs> now you got to beat this boss. It's like <laughs> Mario brothers. You got to beat Bowser in the first level. Once you sweat it out, beating him, you go to the second level and he's a little bit tougher, right? <laughs> but keep going. Okay. 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 That's and all that's winning is done. 
<laughs> no, that's, that's the great thing about this group. I'm just like, okay, yeah, it just keeps me going through and just yeah. dozing through it as much as mm-hmm. I can. But yeah, I do appreciate it. Oh, and I forgot. I'm Sonia. Oops, I'm Sonia Garcia, San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> palatable painting. I forgot to say it at the beginning. I even wrote it down to say it, and I still forgot. <laughs> Sonia, appreciate oh, it. Thank you. She doesn't need caffeine. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> she comes preloaded. Not yep. all of us do. That's awesome. Daryl, how about you? Oh, man. Real quick. Does anybody use Indeed for Resilience? hiring? Yeah, that have... was where my last come customer okay. uh, last painter came from okay their policy changed at least in america i don't know how they do use yeah they yeah they keep changing now i have to pay for every applicant that applies even if they should never have called me uh, before i could reject them because if they don't have any pain experience on a resume they're rejected i i got charged like 1400 dollars back in december because their policy changed i didn't realize that and so now what's going on is I've narrowed it down to where I can only get five a week or five a month. I can't remember, but every time I'm, every time for the last 30 days, I've got an applicant, I, nothing is on their application about painting, nothing on the resume. So I sent them a message. Hey, I noticed you said you had a six years painting experience in residential, but nothing on your resume. Can you reflect on that? Crickets, nothing, $114. And yeah, and that happened, that's probably happened 15 to 20 times since no late November. Mm-hmm. And so, but I've heard that there's a free version of Indeed. I, I think that you don't get near as many perks, but with my geographic, I'm in such a small area. I want to look at the free version, but I've never heard anybody that's used it. Anybody use the free version of Indeed here? How about, in, have you tried, now this varies from market to market, okay? Yeah. I wish there was like a, a one for all, but have you tried Craigslist? No, I haven't tried Craigslist. I've for your market, somebody. I would try it. I, I know it can be I'll rough like and there's some scams out there. You're smart. Just use discernment to weed through some of them. Yeah, I may do that. I've tried Monster and that was a joke for in yeah. my area anyways. Yeah. So I, would, I will try Craigslist. Area, I would try Craigslist. Yeah. Okay. That'll work because I'm breaking up with Indeed, I think. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Craigslist, that's what I got my guys so far. The thing is with Craigslist, I don't see any, let's say, qualified paint on force. You have to go through an interview to figure out who they are. But most of them, hey, I have my resume, they give me a call. I say, mm-hmm. here's the application, fill it up. I'm not going to give you a call, you know. So mm-hmm. follow the steps. And that's it. So the thing is, it, it helped me like two times. I mean, I had 20 applicants, let's say, like two times was fine, but the other ones is not like qualified for me. But it's the only resource here around. And mm-hmm. you have to talk to, to your painters. Like we yeah. said before, you no, know, just advertise yourself 90 days. If you find someone, give them two days off, go vacation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I, and I have all that. And I have all of that on my policy, mm-hmm. not my policy, but my procedure, anyways. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Um, when did all that happen? I think November, December, like okay. I got charged fourteen hundred dollars where I normally get charged two or three hundred. Hmm. And I didn't I did not realize that. So I did a a certain budget option where I basically said I want it to run for a week and do forty dollars a day. I did that as well. The problem okay. that I had was just that so it went from ten leads to two. Those two were just like the other eight. And so I got charged for those too. And okay. it's like, I'm in the same boat. For sake of time, let's get rolling. Rich, one question, buddy. How can we help you to become richer? Stack hundreds. Here you go. Last week, and this goes right along with uh, pre-qualifying your clients, your customers. Um, this guy, I went and looked at the job. He's he's a Tony Soprano, literally. <laughs> he's, he he talks like him. He looks like him. He, it just, you'd, you'd think... Mm-hmm. He's connected. He may be. <laughs> but the one thing is he he's a serious ball buster. And I can take a lot of ribbing, but it's every 10 minutes. Mm. When I first went and looked at the job, of course, none of that came out. But now that I'm working in his house and he's on the construction site, now he's F this, F that, you know, kind of thing. So the other day, was it last Friday, he calls me in the morning and says, the furniture's coming. When are you going to get to that effing baseboard? And I said, 
you're aware that I had a meeting with a the housing authority about my property, blah, blah, blah. I says, I'm not going to make it, but my helper will be there. But I don't know as it'll be done before the furniture shows up. And he goes, you're effing worthless piece of. Wow. Mm. I said, whoa. I said, I, I'm not. I said, I'm not a worthless piece of. You know. I said, that's very uncalled for. He goes, no, you're a worthless. And I said, very uncalled for. I said, I'll do what I can do for you. And, and that's that. Mm -hmm. And I was, I'm fuming at this point. Yeah. And I realized this guy's a ball buster. But he goes, oh, I'm just joking with that. And I'm like, still uncalled for. Enough's enough, right? So I go, and then we, I get the baseboard done. We get the baseboard done and everything's fine and dandy, but I'm still raging about this. And I just mm -hmm. want to leave. Yeah. What is your, I, I don't want to leave the job because I don't want a, a bad mark on my reputation because I've never done that and I don't mm -hmm. feel it's professional, but in the same token to keep my sanity and my helper's sanity, I feel like it's, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're only down to a few odds and ends. I can muscle through it, but if it ever happens again, what would I do? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, everybody I've ever worked for has always been so nice mm -hmm. except for one uh, other customer when I first started the business, but, Mm -hmm. This guy, I will. Yeah. He's, I'm just joking. He may have been, but I'm pretty sure he's a bully and that's how he gets things done. Mm -hmm. But it was very disrespectful. Usually bullies will stand down the moment you directly stand up to them. That's exactly, that's so, when he said, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm just kidding. So when I stand it up and it was mm -hmm. just, man, I'm just so, I'm, right now I'm so mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I let's address to, a few things. Them, but. One is, what do you do? It's an opportunity to level up your EQ. It's not fun. It's not easy. But just like those of us who go to the gym and work out, it's not easy to lift those weights time and time after again. But we're doing hard things to get stronger. This is an opportunity to level up your EQ, to recognize that it's a him problem, not you. And second, keep communicating boundaries. Just say, the first time somebody ever curses talking to me, I say, I'm sorry, did you just swear at me? I don't appreciate that. And they go, whoa, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that because it's such a habit for them. I don't appreciate it. And, and I don't, not that I don't allow it, but I don't engage in conversations with somebody who uses offensive language. It's called offensive for a reason. And if somebody doesn't have enough common sense to be able to communicate value without accentuating it with foul language, I don't really much respect them either. It, what that means is they don't really have any self-confidence. So keep communicating your boundaries. Let them know you don't appreciate it. And that's not okay. Say, so listen, if you want to be a ball buster to others, that's your prerogative. But I don't appreciate it, and I won't stand for it. I uh, would like to finish this job for you, finish it in a professional manner. But in order to do so, I need you to communicate with respect. Is that agreeable to you? Great. Let's move forward. Okay. So that's how I address the situation. Next time, and I heard you say, what about next time, is look for these red flags, right? Usually we can see them. Uh, usually they will uh, complain about others, or you'll see them busting somebody else's chops, right? While you're there or complaining or joking around or being brash. Those are uh, red flags that we're going to refer this gentleman away. Yeah. Yeah. But again, when it comes to the anger, the feelings you're feeling, embrace it as an opportunity to level up your EQ, recognize it's not you and go for a walk, get some exercise. And this is why we make a really big point of exercising in, these, in the mastermind groups and all of them is that is to lower our cortisol. So yes, it builds your cardiovascular, lifting weights, build stronger bones so that we can be stronger and able-bodied long into our elder years and cardio for cardiovascular and also to lose body fat, but to lower our cortisol. So when you exercise every morning, you actually lower your cortisol, allowing you to take on more pressure without feeling stressed. So something else you do is go anytime you're upset, go for a run. And it doesn't have to be a sprint. Don't go all out. Just go for a nice jog and in nature if possible, right? In nature if possible, because that's where just something about nature is so relaxing. And not only will the stress leave from you, but creative ideas will come and you'll start to, your joy will return to you. And at the end of it, you just be like, oh, I feel great. Plus you just accomplish something. So you feel great for accomplishing something too. So lower that cortisol, take care of your emotional well-being, take care of your heart, your health, by exercising, and level up your pre-qualifying standards. Okay, you're welcome, buddy. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. All right, lady and gentlemen, it's time to roll out with takeaways. Chris, lead the way, please. Pre-qualify all clients. 
colder the lead, the colder the entire experience. Beliefs supersede laws. Check out Crucial Conversations. Awesome. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Juan, takeaways? There was great leads for employment. I'm going to check that out. Okay. Right on. Thank you. Isaac? Yeah. I'm asking the guys how the customer experience is going and reframing their mindset to be customer-oriented. And then in that same regard, delegating leadership to your leaders and mm -hmm. really leaning into seeing them grow so that you can step back is what I'm going to work on. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. And just to really drive this home, customer experience. If you can get everybody focused on this, everything else almost takes care of itself. Okay. Awesome. Right on. Hey, Seuss. Hey, Steve. Mine is a delegate authority. Here you go. Hey, Seuss, I need you to text everybody in your mastermind so they can experience what it's like to receive a text that looks like Jesus for a half second. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he takes me, look. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's the whole yeah. Lauren, takeaways. Yeah, looking for the door dash. Like we said, knock on the door, introduce yourself, mm -hmm. say to them, hey, we are working. If you see any tape, any plastic, just please mm -hmm. give us a call. And also for the free estimates. So knock on the door no matter what, and like to provide a free estimate. And that's mm -hmm. what I have. So I have my list already. Yes, sir. Courtesy canvassing, offer free yeah. estimates. And yes. just and then plug in some Zig Ziglar. That helps. Yeah, Zig Ziglar book. <laughs> yep, and then remember your extrovert fuel. I have a tea. Oh, tea, there you go. That works. Right on. Very good. Thank you, Florian. Thank you. Bryce. I really like the idea of reframing our guys to be more customer service oriented. I think that's great. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. I'm glad that, I'm really glad you made it too with everything you've won. Yeah. That's awesome. Way to be. It's character, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Craig? I think for me as well, it's the customer experience question. Yeah, I needed I needed to be reminded about that one. Right on. Awesome. Thank you, Craig. Uh -huh. Sonia? The double your networking, the customer experience as mm -hmm. well. Right on. Very good. Thank you. Rich? I love instead of saying, how's how are things going? Mm -hmm. How's your experience with us? I like that. Um, I'm going to be using that all the time now. Yes. And Daryl, close us out with your takeaways, yeah. please. Yeah, it's always very good. Yeah, I learned the customer experience thing through Mastermind a year or so ago, and it's amazing. I'm going to look into Craigslist, and I just write down notes and everything everybody else is dealing with. It's really cool to see other issues going on. It rings your bell about other things. Hey, I got some issues I can work on in that as well. So it's really good. Right on. Thank you. All right. This concludes today's Mastermind. I want to encourage you guys to cool. continue to dream big, hustle, smarter. You've got this. Have, Have this. a great day, everybody. Have a good day, guys.